Hello, this is Bill with a science fiction starter kit. So the question is, why do you want to read science fiction? If the idea is to escape reality, then you might as well read fantasy. The good science fiction is about improving your understanding of reality and thinking about possibilities. And improving your understanding of science and technology. So books here all show new, newest to oldest. So the idea is the more more modern books have a more modern sensibility as far as technology and scientific thinking. So first is Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. So this one is from 2015. So, uh, the future of humanity in this book is rather bleak, but that by considering how we can totally screw things up gives us a better chance of trying to avoid making those screw-ups. Like in here, the major problem with humanity is nuclear war, war, warfare. So you got many people, or especially few leaders, haven't grasped that idea and uh, your intent on starting World War Three. But scientific ideas in here involve evolution. That um, there was a virus that was genetically engineered to uh, speed up the evolution of monkeys, but by mistake it infected spiders. So you have a world of intelligent spiders in here. So the story goes through many generations of spiders as they get more and more intelligent. So it helps think about evolutionary ideas. And then there's the sp spiders exploring, exploring uh, ant colonies for computation. So uh, this idea of programming ants the way we program computers. So it gives you a 
some introduction to complex systems was evolution is a great example of complex systems so reading about evolution is a good way to to uh, put your baby toe into the ocean of understanding complex systems. So next is the Expanse series by James S. A. Corey. So you, if you haven't read the books yet, you may have seen the TV series. Uh, this book is rather light compared to, to the rest of the books on, on this list. So it should be an easy read if you haven't read science fiction before or not very much. So uh, I like stories with intelligent characters that use their brain power to solve problems. So in The Expanse you have Christian Avrasala. So her expertise is politics and manipulating people. Then Praxodite Meng. He often goes on a tangent talking about complex systems involving ecology. And then there's Naomi Nagata. So she's at a she's an expert at spacecraft and computer systems and knows how to hack them and modify them, improve them. And there's L.V. Oki. So I think it's book four where she's talking about the ecology of the alien ecology on on the world that they're trying to understand. So it's more of your understanding complex systems. So in all of these books, it's, it's good, good to expose yourself to these complex complex ideas even if you don't fully understand them that the more hard sci-fi you read the over time it'll you'll build up better understanding of, of the ideas presented in hard sci-fi So the expense is from 2011. And next is the three body problem by Six and Lu, translated by Ken Lu. So I'm probably pronouncing these Chinese names wrong, but. So this one's 
good. So it helps you uh, get some exposure to a, another culture, which you may be completely unfamiliar with. Was the beginning of this is takes place during the Cultural Revolution. So in China, so if you want to understand that better, you can look up Chinese history from 1966 to 1976. But without knowing the details of history, it's still an enjoyable read. But uh, many people that read this complain about the how female characters are portrayed. So I don't know how much of that is because of the author or Chinese culture or or if he's trying to be consistent with the culture and the historical period that he's writing about. But my idea with reading books is not to let the negative aspects of them t take away from enjoying the rest of the book. So also, the at the end of this book, the physics gets a little complex, so I read through that without taking the time to fully understand it, so if you haven't done a lot of reading on advanced physics concepts, you won't fully grasp what he's talking about, but It's a good idea to read through that just to begin your exposure to more advanced physics. Then there's Pandora's Star by Peter F. Hamilton. So this is actually the first half of a novel second half is Judas Unchanged, so the two of them together is like a 2,000 page story, and so if you start reading this and you're enjoying it, make sure you have Judas Unchanged before you get to the end of the book, because uh, interesting cliffhanger at the end of this book. You'll want to immediately start on the next book. So, uh, he doesn't go into a lot of detail, detail on how various technologies work or the science behind them. But uh, the technology is very much a part of the story. So uh, faster than light travel is achieved using wormhole technology. which is probably more scientifically plausible than warp drive. So did I say that Pan Pandora's star was from 2004? And 
Revelation Space by Alistair Reynolds is from 2000. So Alistair Reynolds started out as an astrophysicist and when he became a successful writer then he he quit his job with the European Space Agency and went full-time writing. So this there is no faster than light travel so uh, he, he uh, talks a lot about effects of uh, relativity from high speed travel, uh, ti time dilation, as well as the amount of time that elapses going from one star system to another and while you're in cryo sleep. So uh, his, it's fairly, his novels are fairly consistent with uh, with scientific theory. So if you enjoy this book, there's the whole Revelation Space series and and everything else that he's written. And a Deepness in the Sky by Werner Vinge, that's just from 1999. So this one also uh, involves relativistic effects and long time periods from sublight travel in a starship so uh, this one uh, one the main character well in parts of the book the main character uh, he it's hacking the, the starship and inventing communication protocol. So he's over time he learns the software and the systems on the starship and improves it. And since they're a trading network. communication protocol is basically to update their libraries of everything they learn when they encounter new systems, new colonies. And so when another trader ship comes by centuries later, they have an idea of what they might encounter. So this involves the evolution of a alien species over a long time period. And encounter between humans and these aliens. And the Diamond Age 
1995. So this is considered uh, cyber cyberpunk, but uh, so I find it a little, little better than Snow Crash because the you get the discussion of AI and nanotechnology where Snow Crash is more about virtual reality, cyberspace. So this is basically technology built on top of cyberspace. So it's a uh, some of the concepts are maybe a little out of date compared to ideas in more modern science fiction. But the thing to pay attention to here is, is a young lady's illustrated primer, like in the subtitle there that basically uh, somebody from uh, a young girl from a, a low income neighborhood discovers a young lady's primer which is basically a tablet that to teach her everything she needs to know except for it was intended for a her a rich girl so we basically have access to the world's information now. We just don't have the AI smarts to, uh, to guide us through it, like, like in the young lady's primer. And then there's the idea of world of abundance created by nanotechnology. So next on my list is Hyperion by Dan Simmons. So that's 1989. So it's been a while since I read this, but uh, It's one of the better science fiction novels I've read, as far as I remember. And then consider Plebes by Ian e M. Banks. So this is 1987. So. This is considered the first novel in the culture series. It says a culture novel there. That culture is an advanced civilization that is mainly run by AIs and there's a super abundance of everything but mo most of the novels in the series um, involve the culture 
manipulating other societies which are not yet part of the culture. So the culture is not not based on humans, but the way the way it's written, you don't really get that sense for the most part. But there is a short story in in one of the books involving uh, culture agents studying Earth to decide if uh, humans should become part of the culture. And then it's Neuromancer by William Gibson. So this book is getting rather old as far as modern sensibility goes, but it is basically the beginning of the well, beginning of cyberpunk and uh, well, there's been cyberpunk ideas in earlier novels, but this is the first one that made cyberpunk a thing. And also the beginning of cy cyber ideas that run throughout all the other books that I've shown before this. So, uh, in classic sci-fi, so basically before the 80s, so this one was 1984, and consider Plea Bass was 1987. I don't know if I said that before. But before the 80s, the emphasis on, in hard sci-fi was more on the space travel. So you get novels that involve colonizing the solar system or throughout the galaxy, but they had no concept of having all of humanity's knowledge and global communications at your fingertips, in your pocket. So uh, that was going to be my list of 10 items, but then the first novel I showed was Children of Time, which involves the uplifting of the spiders by ex accident when their intent was to uplift monkeys. So this is, I don't know of an earlier no novel in Sun Diver by David Brin that has the, un the uplift idea. So in Sun Diver you have uplifted dolphins and chimpanzees. So this was from 1980, and also in Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky, the space station 
laboratory in orbit around the planet where they're attempting to uplift monkeys was it's called the Brin Station. So that's eleven books that you should read if you're serious about investigating the future of science and technology and expanding your thinking the world of the possibilities for the future so uh, there is a lot of classic sci-fi that's worth reading very enjoyable to read but uh, it's not not the best if your main idea is to uh, to explore science and technology from a modern perspective so that's all for this video see you in the next one